my grandma will say this energy <laughs> Come on, come on. Kemilala. If you have a story, lift your voice for me. What we are Majimikolo. Thank you, Jesus. For the rest of our life, we will praise you. What about you? You will all be happy. It's a key. It's a boy. Oh, come to tell friend what you all are. Keje bonkule. In the lonely, it's a war. But okay, what he say? It's a key war. My Jimmy Paul. Ike me balala be mi dale me ba mi danyu mo shi shi mi ni bi fe kwa mi le mi na bo ni e mi si mo so keke yo e mi e na mi e chui dada e ye mi mi e ba E no kwale lebe na gbe ni bi fe ye na be ko nyo mo su mo da e yo ni bi fe ye na be ko nyo mo su mo da ni bi fe ni bi fe
time. Lord, I lift your name. Say, Lord, I lift your name. Your presence, fear is silent. 
for you wear the victor's crown let your glory fill the temple let your power overflow by your grace i live and breathe to worship you Indeed, Jesus has overcome. Jesus is 
our conqueror. And of course, more than a conqueror. This season is not normal. But I tell you, COVID is flying, is vanishing from our system. We overcome COVID demon in the name of Jesus Christ. In the midst of COVID-19, we are more than conquerors. Come on, shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for this night one more time. I welcome you to this nice um, encounter with the blood of Jesus Christ and his word. And I trust that as we preach God's word, as we preach Jesus, hallelujah, something good will rub on you tonight. The month of June was captioned that I may know him. That's a very powerful caption that will take us for a long time. That I may know him. And that was a very powerful prayer request made by the Apostle Paul, the great apostle who was so much powerful that in his days he was able to plant churches across Asia. That was the man I'm talking about. Who went to heaven and heard things that ears could not hear and mouths could not utter. That was the man. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death. That's our caption, that I may know him. Come on, say with me, that I may know him. That I may know him. That's our request. And Moses, the man of God, prayed the same prayer in Exodus 33, from verse 13 to 15, that I may know him. I may see your glory. I may know your glory. I may know the way. So, this is our prayer. This should be your prayer every day. Lord, enlighten me. Lord, open my eyes. Lord, illumine my heart. Let me know you. And once you get to know who God is, you'll be empowered to face life. All the fears shall leave your system. The phobia for COVID-19 shall go. Because you know the God you serve. If you don't know the God you serve, that's when people deceive you. If you know the God you serve, the one you worship, you will never ever bow out in defeat. You face the world and win every battle against your life. Come on, say a big amen now. Amen. So Philippians 3 verse 10, that I may know him, that I may know him. Now, knowing Jesus is very important. And then we also went to Matthew 16 from verse 13 coming, which has been a scripture we keep reading all the time. Matthew 16 from 13 says that, when Jesus came into the region of Caesar Philippi, he had disciples saying, Who do men say that are the son of man am? He said son of man because Jesus was like he was in the flesh, right? So what do people say about me? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? People's opinions is your opinion. What do you say about Jesus Christ? We must have a personal, individual revelation about Christ. We must know God individually and personally. That's my point. This time that we don't, go, we don't really attend church much. During the lockdown, you see, now it was between you and your God. If you know God, you won't stop praying. You won't stop worshipping Him. You will never stop reading your Bible. You won't stop your giving life. You will never stop uh, doing the spiritual stuff. If you know the one you serve. Because lockdown can never lock your prayer down. Praise God. So, what do you say that I am? They say this, they say that. But what do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ. The son of the living God. You are the Christ. The anointed one. The savior. The deliverer, the anointed savior, the son of the living God. He ascribed divinity to Christ because the living God has a son with the same genes, the same essence in him. So Peter's revelation was that Jesus, you are not just ordinary. You came from God. You are the son of God and you bear the image of the father God. Hallelujah. Now Jesus answered, and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father 
who is in heaven. Oh, may the Father reveal this unto you. Amen. I pray that the Father shall open your eyes to see who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. And also, that is moreover upon, I say to you that you are Peter. On this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. I love this scripture. You see, Jesus is building his church upon revelation that he is the son of God. If you don't know Jesus as the son of God, your Christian life will not be well. You must know Jesus as God, the son. God, the son. The foundation of the church is Jesus who is God, the son. He's not an ordinary person like any prophet who came to the world. Like other, other prophets say, other preachers from other religious um, settings, other religious leanings say, Jesus is not just an ordinary man. Jesus is God, the son. God, the son. That was the revelation Peter revealed about Jesus. And Jesus said, look, as for this revelation, it wasn't you. It wasn't flesh and blood. It wasn't your learning. It was the father himself who revealed this to you. I pray that the Father shall open your eyes to see who Jesus is. Jesus, the Son. So that I may know him. Now, the scriptures have so much about Jesus to say. And I will repeat again. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. I don't get tired preaching Jesus. Why should I get tired about the same thing? No. It's so refreshing. It's so boring. If Jesus is boring you, you're not a good Christian. I'm telling you, don't get bored. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Unto us, a child is born. That is Christmas. He was born physically. But unto us, a son is given. A son was not born, but given. Okay? This is the crux of the matter. Jesus, the son, was not born. He was given. So Jesus possessed twofold nature. He had a human nature, Christmas. He was born in Christmas. He became incarnated, God in the flesh. Incarnated means that God became flesh. Amen. And he was given as a son. That means that he had a divine nature. So Jesus was the God, but he was fully man and was fully God. He was fully man because at one point in time, Jesus had to eat. He was tired in the boat. He showed signs of humanity. I mean, several of them. We can't go through them right now. But spiritually, Jesus was not just him. He was God, the Son, who possessed the essence, the nature, the genes of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't get tired. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a clap of I love this. Let's talk about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, understand. If you know that Jesus Christ was not just a man, it will, put, it will make your faith become very strong. Amen. And the God will be upon his shoulder. It's nature because wonderful counselor, mighty God. You see, mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Jesus was made equal with the Father. I said, I and the Father, my Father are one. One in essence. And so, Jesus was not just a man. He was God. Now, I want to also continue to say that if we put the Bible, okay, down, divide into two, Old Testament and New Testament, let's try to find Jesus, not in the new, because we know that new is so much there, but in the old. The scriptures of the Old Testament had a lot to say about Jesus. Before Christ came, the scriptures had spoken about him. So today, we will we'll still attempt, all right, again, to put the, this, this, this aside and focus on the Old Testament. Now, why am I saying this? In Luke chapter um, 24, verse 13, Luke 24, 13, there's a story there. And I want to read that story because it's a to be a blessing. Luke 24, 13, when Christ rose again, something happened. And the very day, two of, the, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus. Emmaus, okay. English say Emmaus is a right Hebrew, I mean, a Hebrew word. About seven miles 
from Jerusalem. That's a three hours journey, okay? 30 miles. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. I don't know what to discuss. I don't know what you talk about as friends. But each time you discuss Jesus, he will draw near. <laughs> each time a family text decides that today we shall talk Jesus, he will draw near. If you hear your friends will discuss Jesus, he will come near. Jesus Christ draw near. Wherever he was, he heard people talking about him. If they say they gossip, the best gossip is about Jesus. They <laughs> gossip about Jesus Christ. And Christ was being gossip. He came to hear the gossip. Oh. He drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? Their eyes were open, closed. They couldn't see him. And they stood still looking sad. The one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here these days? And he said to them, What things? As if he didn't know. Gossip. <laughs> Jesus knows everything. <laughs> As if he didn't know. What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. So they saw him as a prophet. Not as God, as a prophet. Let's continue. And how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes. And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had, seen, they, had, they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But, they, but him, they did not find. They don't see and he said to them, Oh foolish. He said to them, Oh foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Now listen, the, the point is that he said, Oh thou foolish people, you are too slow of heart. Didn't you know the prophets have spoken about me? That the Christ should die and enter glory. It means that Jesus made reference to the prophets, the Old Testament, because, because then the Bible had not been written like we have today. They had a scrolls of the prophets. So the prophets are spoken about Jesus. He said, You people, you are foolish. Now listen carefully. Can I say I'm a foolish person if I don't know that several things have been said about Jesus in the Old Testament? I should be a foolish person. So, let me tell you, we must go to the Old Testament too and read what they have spoken about Jesus. Jesus was not just in the New Testament. He was in the Old Testament. Give God a clap offering for that. Now, in Acts 17, verse 1 to 3, Acts, I'm giving you empty scriptures. Then we'll go to OT. Acts 17, to 3. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollo, the right, Paul and his team, right? Paul and his preaching team, missionary team. They came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them. And for three Sabbaths, three Sabbaths, you know, three full weeks, reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead from the dead and saying this Jesus whom I pray to you is a Christ now listen Paul reasoned from the Old Testament scriptures 
what was written about Jesus that this is the Christ. He risen for three full days. I mean, three full Sabbaths, three full uh, Saturdays. That means three full weeks. Every day for three days, he had to teach them about the Christ. From which book? The Old Testament. So Jesus had lived already before he came to live in the New Testament. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in the Old Testament, we saw Jesus in different forms. Jesus said to the Jews, before Abraham was, I am. Last week, I shared that with you. And he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my days. Where was that? Abraham saw Jesus among other angels. There were three people that came to Abraham. And Abraham was able to locate the Lord among the three. And that the Lord was Jesus. And the Lord promised that Abraham would give birth. And that promise came to pass. And Isaac was born. The Lord. Abraham stood before the Lord to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. That was the Lord. When the two angels had, had gone. That was Abraham interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord appeared. Hallelujah. Now, again, we see the Lord appearing in the book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 14 coming down. And we shall look at that shortly. Amen. Amen. And it will be a blessing unto us. Now before then, let me also go back again to um, Exodus chapter 6 verse 1 to 5 and it says Then the Lord said to Moses Now you see what I will do to Pharaoh For with a strong hand he will let them go and with a strong hand he will deliver them out of this land and God spoke to Moses and said to him I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am Jehovah. I am Jehovah. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. As God Almighty. But my name, Lord, was not known to them. I appear to them as Lord Almighty. God Almighty. God Almighty. But my name, Lord. I was not known to them. I've also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Egypt, Canaan, and so on and so forth. So God appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob as God Almighty. Don't forget, Jesus Christ is called Almighty in the book of Revelation 1. So he appeared to them in several ways as God Almighty. That was Jesus. Before Abraham was, I am. Don't forget. Abraham rejoiced to see my days. And he was in some days he was glad. Christ said that. So he appeared. Now, in the book of Genesis 14, from 18 to 23, the Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God, Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God, Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now, Abraham met a certain priest. He was called Melchizedek. Say it. Melchizedek. Say it again. Melchizedek. Abraham went to fight a battle, right? He won the battle, okay, against nations, nations that were ransacking people. Abraham organized his army, his own trained army, and he went and fought and brought back goods. He brought back those who have been taking slavery. And then Abraham tied from the goods. See, tithing is not something we do from as a law. Tithing even was there before, before Moses made it the law. So Abraham gave a tithe of all to the Lord, to the Mekisedek. So I said, don't pay tithe. It's not a law. We are not in the, in the New Testament. Okay? This happened before the, New, before the law of Moses was enacted. 
Abraham looked at this man and said, Ah, this one is a priest of God. And I was wondering, which kind of worship was going on in Abraham's time? To have a priest. All we knew was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and others. But we didn't know about a, a church or a religion or something in his time that was a, a, a priest. But Abraham saw that this man was not just an ordinary man. He was a priest. And his name was called Melchizedek. So Abraham paid tithe to this man, this priest, called Melchizedek. Now, we have to understand who this man was. Now, in Hebrews 7, from verse 1 to 6, go there. I'll show you something. Jesus was in the Old Testament. Hebrews 7, 1 to 6. And he says that, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First, being translated king of righteousness, that is the king, Melchizedek. Then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Now, king of peace. Unto us a child is born. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. King of Peace. As that's all this Prince of Peace. And I'm saying that this Melchizedek is called King of Righteousness. Who is that King? Jesus. Who is the King of Peace? Prince of Peace. The Jesus. And Abraham made this man and paid tithe to this man. Now, listen to this man's background. Listen, you. be careful and listen. This is Bible. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Now, that should sound something to you. But made like the son of God, like the son of God, remains a priest continually. Now, hear this. People couldn't locate the background of this man Abraham met. The only name they knew about the man was that he was called King of Salem. King of Peace. They didn't know like the Ayuku or like maybe uh, uh, King of the Gun people. You know, or like the Tufu or like the something. I mean, like Ayuku, the Ayuku or near Ayuku. You know, or like a two four premper or something, whom you can trace that it came from this family in Ashanti, or this person came from this place, Taiwa Ashanti um, 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 a tribe in Ghana. This person's tribe, what the boy was coming from, nobody could tell. We were told there's no mother, he didn't have a mother and a father, <laughs> no genealogy. You can't say he was born by so and so, by that, by that, and great grandfather. He didn't have any great grandfather. That was the description about Melchizedek that was made. He was like a human being because Christ appeared most of the time as a human being. He didn't appear as an angel like with, with wings. Of course, there are angels who didn't have wings. They only appear to deliver messages. Some angels have got wings, some don't have wings. Jesus was not an angel with wings. Jesus was the son of God who appeared physically like a human being in the Old Testament. He appeared as Melchizedek, whom Abraham was so spiritual, that man, I don't know. So sensitive. You know, look at Abraham. When he was in front of his tent door, he saw three men coming and he hurriedly went and welcomed them. He said, come to my house. If you have if you are tired, come and wash your feet. Come and eat something. And he falls them. And then you know what? One of them was the Lord. Abraham was so sensitive. Oh, may God give us this spirit. Amen. To know Jesus. Abraham was able to locate Jesus or the Lord among the three, the, the three people that came to him. Abraham, after God, after getting all the loot booty from the wall. He saw this man. I don't know where he met him. He just met him and said, ah, this man deserves it. This man is different. This man is Jesus Christ. He's making... So Abraham gave the man tight. 
But you know, that man was not born. There's no record. There's no record about this man in history, in the Bible. Abraham's father, we know. Abraham's father, we know where Abraham came from. We know Abraham's his family, terror and the others, terror. I mean, we knew, we know. But as for Melchizedek, his father was not known. And Hebrews 7 says that he was without father, without mother, without genealogy. You understand that? Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but men like the Son of God remains a priest continually. So Jesus was a high priest who received a tithe from Abraham. Jesus is an everlasting high priest for us. Even right now as I'm speaking, Christ is in heaven as our high priest. Standing in for us. Come on, praise the Lord. The high priestly ministry of Christ was expressed through Melchizedek. I love this. Now, in verse 4, it says that, Now, consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. Now, tithing is not, it's not a law. Tithing is a revelation. The first fruits we give is not a law. The first fruits and the tithes, they came before the law. The law of the tithe was enacted by Moses. But this tithing experience, this tithing thing, revelation, came long before Moses was born. So tithing is not a man-made institution. Tithing is divine. Tithing is godly. Tithing is a revelation. Like the first fruits. So Abraham gave a tithe to him. And indeed, verse 5, those who are of the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, had a commandment to receive tithes from the people, according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them, that is, because of the received tithes from Abraham. Now, so, oh, goodness, a message shall follow us. Nekis said that they didn't have genealogy. He received time from Abraham. Hallelujah. And blessed him who had the promises. Oh, praise God. What am I talking about? Jesus appeared as a human being in the Old Testament as Melchizedek, high priest, to receive tithe. Now, when you read down, verse 7, verse 7, verse 7 says something very powerful. And it says that Oh, wow. It is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. In the one case, tithes are received by mortal men. But in the other case, by one of whom it is testified that he lives. When you pay your tithes, human beings receive the tithe, But God receives the tithe in heaven. You got a clap offering. <laughs> my message is not about tithing but I'm showing you that Jesus appeared in the Old Testament several times over here to Abraham he appeared as a high priest who received tithes from Abraham now in some other references Jesus appeared as the angel of the Lord and I'll share this with you shortly and I bring my message to the, to the end. In some instances, he appeared as what? The angel of the Lord. Joshua 5, verse 13 to 15. Joshua and Israel, they had come to the brink of Jericho, about to take that country. Look at what happened. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua, the word Joshua means Jehoshua. Jehoshua means Jehovah the Savior. <laughs> the Lord our Savior. And that same name was 
applied to Christ in Matthew 1 21. When I was in children's department, they, they taught us. And she shall bring forth a son, and that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I've never forgotten this scripture. When, when I was a little boy, two years old, three, from children's department, let, let our children go to church. Hallelujah. They said, go and worship without your children. How can, that, 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 does that make sense? Go to church and leave your children behind. Just like Pharaoh told the Israelites. You can go and worship your God, but leave your children and your wife behind. We bind of the spirit. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So, the point here is that the man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua, our Savior, went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No! But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. This is a typical manifestation of Jesus as the commander of the host of Israel. Come on, say a big amen. The commander of the lost army. Jesus appeared as the commander. That is why he came and conquered sin. The commander of God's army, he came and fought spiritual battles. He died and rose again, conquered hell, conquered demons, conquered Satan. Give him a clap of it now. Thank you so much, Lord. So Jesus appeared as a man, not with angels, but he appeared. Anytime you see the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, it was Jesus who appeared as God's messenger, as the son of God in the Old Testament. He will fight your battles. Amen. He's a commander of the army of God. He will fight up. That's why nobody can destroy Christianity. Ah, nobody can eradicate Christianity. Nobody. They will kill us. They will slaughter our heads. But the more you kill us, the more we come. The more you try to destroy Christianity, the stronger we become. I'm telling you, COVID says, don't go to church. Okay, we are coming back. 100, 100. We shall start. But when COVID is done, we shall see churches booming and growing. You can never keep water forever. Cock. Put a cock under it to pop up. The church cannot be defeated. So I'll build my church and let the commander says so. Ah, the commander says so. The commander says so. How many Christians have been died? We saw some being killed on Libyan shores. Their heads were beheaded. Go to Libya today. I saw some people believing in Christ and being baptized. I said, Come on, the blood of the martyrs, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of church growth. When Christians sacrificed for God. Sacrifice to worship in the midst of COVID. Go to church. With all protocols observed. <laughs> hey, people are afraid to get attention. Why? We can go to the marketplace. We can, we can go to the working places in the bars, in the church, but church. Ah, are we makers of COVID 19? Are we inventors? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The commander says, I will fight for you. So hold your peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My time is almost up. The commander will fight for you. I'll come your way next week because I'll keep talking about Jesus. He's the commander of the army, of God's army. He will fight our battles. Every battle you are fighting. See, when Joshua was there, he was going to spy the land of Jericho to see how he could take it. And when he was looking, the man appeared with a sword drawn, ready. There's a sword drawn. There's a sword drawn. There's a sword drawn. Ready to fight for the church. Is that, who are you? Are you against us? No. Me? What? I have come. I've, I've come as the commander. I'm commander in chief. I'm what? The commander in chief. I've come to fight. And you saw how Jericho was taken. He was cool and collected. He said, go around and just go around seven times. 
The seven times go seven times and shout and praise God. The commander wins by praise. We worship him, praise him. Every battle of yours shall be won. Every war shall be broken down. The commander say, I've come, commander. I'm the commander. Look, let Jesus be your commander. Every battle you are fighting, financial battle, spiritual battle, family battle, marriage battle, hey, let the commander be in charge of your life. The commander, he said, now I've come. He said, now I've come. Now I have come. Now I have come. The commander, I'm in charge. Look, let me say this, and then we, we pray. Whatever you are going through right now, surrender it to the Lord. The commander, the commander, the Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of righteousness, king of peace. Peace shall be your portion. Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and thank him. Thank him. Jehoshua. Jehoshua, thank him. Masatuka. Matori Atoski. Laoka Palonito Santos. Malaria Luca Zahan Tasta. Oh, give him worship. Give him blessing. Malo Shista Palonire Zaza. In the name of Baroshi Kapa Tasaka. In the name of Jesus. Now listen carefully. The man said, I'm the commander of the army of Israel. I've come. And he said, Where you are standing is the holy ground. And Joshua went and worshipped him. Now, angels didn't receive worship. No testament. No angel received worship. But this man came and he received worship. Where you are standing is the holy ground. It's equal to when Moses met God on the mountain. And God said, Moses, remove your shoes. Where you are standing is the holy ground. It's the same, the same angel that spoke with Moses in the burning bush. The same spoke with Joshua. He said, where you are standing is the holy ground. Sister and brother, where you stand right now in your room is the holy ground. Jesus is right there. You know, because we are gossiping about Jesus. And as he got near the two disciples, he's near you right now. As we discuss him and gossip about Jesus Christ, he's near. Say, Lord, I thank you. Maybe as I speak right now, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You knew him as maybe as a messenger, as a prophet somewhere. But today you know that Christ is God. So you want to accept him as your God and your Lord and Savior. Pray this prayer with you. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe you are my Lord and my God. And you died as it was written about you. You were buried and you, were, and you rose again on the third day as it was written about you. I confess you. I receive you. I declare you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus. You are my commander. You are in charge of my life. Now lift your two hands up wherever you are and say, Lord, everybody, everybody do it. Say, I surrender my life, my battles, my, my destiny, my business, my family, my dreams. And my, and my vision lord, lord you are the commander, are the commander of, my of my life the commander, the commander of, the of the army of israel take charge take charge take charge, take charge. Take charge. now worship him worship him master to worship him worship baro sheze let's to fools to prune thy you loterio cosco tapa lastica our high priest is there mas sheke sa Mareto son toro mokosko tatasta zama kazaki lao shabaro se tari andaka e santam ban tuli malika andaka ba ila baba baba ya baba baba in Jesus precious name we thank you Lord Hallelujah now when you read what we read Melchizedek served Abraham with wine and bread and then Abraham paid tithe to him. So Titan goes with communion. It, they, they, you, can't, you can't do anything about it. He, 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 he paid tight to him. And the man served him with bread and wine. That is Jesus. And right over there, Jesus was saying that, look, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood will be shared for you. So right with Mekisedek, he proved that he will come and die. 
I mean, it's so safe. Scriptures is, I mean, so nice to read, read scriptures. And so, he served him with communion. Abraham took communion. Abraham, the, the richest man in his generation. Abraham. He believed in Titan. He, he, he believed in God. He worshipped God. He paid tithe to Melchizedek. And he was giving communion. So wherever you are, take your body and the bread and the biscuit and the bread and say, Lord Jesus, in the night you were betrayed. In the night, you, took bread, you took bread. You gave thanks. And, and broke it. And said, Take, take eat. eat. This, this is my body. Is my body. Broken for you. Broken for Do, this Do this in remembrance of me. Remembrance of Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, as I eat your body, I, eat your body, I receive my healing. Receive my By your stripes I was healed. And the pain in my body any growth in my body, any in my body. As, I as I eat by faith in your healing power, your healing power. I receive healing right now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's take it now. Thank you, Lord. Now take the wine. He's serving with wine as well, which represents the, the blood. There's life in the blood. When you are dead, your blood dies. It dies first. You know, life. The real life of the flesh is in the blood. And Christ gave us his life to give us life. His blood to give us life. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord. in the same manner, you took the cup and said, this is my blood of the New Testament. Share for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it, all of you. As often as you drink my blood, you show my death till I come. Lord, by your blood, you overcame satanic forces. You overcame demons. I drink this blood and I overcome every challenge, every COVID spirit, hunting people to kill. By the blood of Jesus, I cast it out right now. Every witchcraft spirit, every voodoo force in my family, in the horns, in the spiritual altars, speaking against my life, I silence their voice in the name of Jesus. And I drink the blood of sprinkling for my victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink now. Thank you, Lord. Be God's and praise. Little of and thank him, my Santa. Worship him. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. Melchizedek. Yes, that's his name. King of righteousness. King of peace. He's a high priest in heaven. Now we are praying this prayer right now. Any satanic entity of COVID leave our nation. It's a demon. We have to fight it and pray against it. Listen, hold your hands. I mean, if you, if you are a family, right? The family and you are home. Okay? Hold your hands, right? Don't be afraid. Families can hold your hands. Amen. We are commanding COVID to lead the families of, the, of Ghana, of the world. Every demon of COVID putting fear people, we are binding and casting out. In Jesus' name. Come on, pray right now. More shaka. Covid power, zazi tunimizi, zinzun zangam tasa, e sama kasa katuni, Libyan da an santam pantalu, e libi katu kabaka andandra, shy and seeking durian dale, derian dao sauki, pao shauki, e saka seeking sakin dum, pandelu, e andam bamba luki masaka santa, ilam bamba le. Shaka sikin turian siantiantra pranito suleri andagi zama gaduni mituni makantu le mampai e saka saka taramakata now the last prayer we are invoking the blood of sprinkling 
over the nations of Ghana, the nation of Ghana in, in, in Africa, in the world. May the blood of sprinkling deliver the nations. May the sun of righteousness arise with healing its wings. May God heal the nations right now. Come on, pray. The blood. The blood of blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Kisutaka. Zamakata. The blood. The blood of Jesus against the coming spirits in nations. We deploy the blood, the blood, the blood. Lebo bebo sona. Elian dama sin to me. Dan zurian danza. We rebuild the copy demon right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, laba sakata. Thank. We are praying last prayer for all doctors and all nurses who are the forefront. We know that in Ghana, some two minister was affected. We are praying that the Lord shall deliver our doctors. May God save them. All those at the forefront, drivers, nurses. Those who, I mean, uh, the lab technicians, may the Lord preserve them. Let's pray. Eh, Lama Saka. Eh, San Sikin Dao. Eh, Yanda Shasikin Dao. Eh, Lama, Lord, preserve the doctors. Eh, Nessie, Pad, Lord, all those at the forefront. Lord, preserving life. Lord, preserve their lives. Keep them from this demonic spirit of COVID. Eh, Sambuntu Zeluzi. Parandanda to Sarakata Kapa. Eh, Shasikin Durian Deluzia. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, preserve this one to thy glory. In Jesus' precious name. There's power, there is power, there is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, oh, there is power in the blood of the Lamb. Come on, says to me, Lord, I thank you. I'm safe. I'm secured. I'm secured. I am insured. I am insured. And, I'm and I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Come on, say, under his banner of his blood, under his banner of his love, of his I am safe. I am, safe. I am secured. I am, I am insured. I am, I am covered. I am protected. Come on, speak it out with both. Say, under his banner. Of his, love, of his love and of his blood, of his blood. I'm, safe. I am safe I'm secured I am, secure. I am insured, I am, insured. I, am I am protected and I am covered, and I am covered. give me some clap offering now Baroche Saka. we thank you father we give you praise hallelujah hallelujah amen now I'm coming back powerfully again this week Jesus talk about Jesus let's talk about Jesus Let's talk about our Lord. Come on. Let's talk about, let's talk about Jesus. Now, when you discuss Jesus and gossip about him, he will come here. So, from today, please, let's gossip about Jesus, right? As we gossip, you and your husband, you and your wife, you and your children, I mean the children that gossip about who Jesus Christ, Old Testament, as we gossip about him, he will draw near as he did to the two disciples. God bless you so much. We are closing right now, but if you have a, a seat for God, we don't, we, we don't give by law, we give by revelation. Every giving points to the cross. It points to the cross. Every giving you give gets to the cross. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When you give anything, you are pointing to the cross. And when you sow a seed, it comes back multiple. The Bible says that unless a grain of seed falls to the ground, it abides alone. But when it's sown and it dies, it grows, sprouts, and bears more fruit. Every giving, whether there's tithing or first fruits or whatever it is, free, free giving, it always points to the cross. And take your seat, take your phone, and let's pray after, after me. Say, Father, Father I, thank you I thank you for the cross. I bless you for Jesus, bless you. who is my Savior and my Lord. My I sow this seed and I believe I'm reaping hundredfold in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we'll praise God for just we'll praise God and come back and close official. Don't log out. Let me bless you according to the Bible. Christ always blesses disciples before they disperse. So don't log out yet. I'll bless you with divine blessing before you leave. Let's praise God for just three minutes. I'll be right back. Let's go. Come and see what
Clap your hands, come on, put your hands together. Oh, my Hallelujah, my Oh, better you are Hallelujah, <laughs> Glory, 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Moina, Moina, So I will lift up your name. I will lift up your mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God so much for such a powerful time in His Word. Don't forget, learn to gossip about Jesus. With your friends, with your family. And as you do so, Jesus will draw near. Then don't forget that Jesus was in the Old Testament. Several times he appeared. And this will continue. As Melchizedek, without, I mean, without mother or father, nobody knew his descent, he appeared. And Abraham paid tithe to him. This same Jesus appeared to Joshua and said, I'm the commander <laughs> of the army of God. Don't worry, I'll take charge. Let me tell you, stop being afraid. It's a commander in, in chief who takes charge of affairs. When things are going so haywire and you've lost control, submit and surrender to this commander in chief of God's army. I thank God for tonight. Let me pray and we close. Friday, we are coming to pray. Please, just engage the prayer session on friday it will be very powerful amen let me pray father we thank you for every seed sown tonight whatever has been given lord as a seed from your people's hearts i pray that you show them that you are god who are, who can outgive us do maybe more than we ask or think i pray for your people whose hearts are longing for you and searching for you and looking for you i pray that we depart here, your presence shall be with them. In their homes, in their businesses, in their offices. For you have said you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. You will never put us to shame. And nobody in your flocks shall be put to shame. I thank you that you glorify your people and you put laughter in our mouths as you did to Abraham. Lord, I thank you and bless you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. 
be this now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our life. We are dwelling in the presence of the Lord forever. We are in the presence forever. Amen. God bless you and see you on Friday prayer. Don't forget that let's talk about Jesus. And then Sunday also, we, we still come to church. Sunday was, um, we are having two services. First service and then we have second service. So just choose a service you like and observe the protocol. We are 7 to 8. So you must be there by 6.30. Wash your hands, clean your hands, sanitize your hands and observe the protocols. And by 7 o'clock we start we have only one hour service, so don't forget that one as well. And then the next service is from 9 to 10. From 7 to 8, and then 9 to 10. In all the services, you come 30 minutes before the time, so that you can sanitize and do the protocols. God bless you. As we go, we shall also open the services one by one. So come Sunday, two services are happening. Choose what you like. If you like, send text or call the numbers that you can see on the screen or the numbers are sent uh, to the platform. Just call them and let's know you are coming so we can book you in Jesus' precious name. And then we shall still be on Facebook Live as usual. We continue with the Facebook Live. Amen. Bless you. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. I'm <laughs>